Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's feature plant is going to be on the ficus shiveriana. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you sure it's shiveriana? Could it be shiverina? Could it be shiveriana? Have you tried googling it? Nothing coming up. Anyway, if anyone knows what the correct pronunciation is, feel free to drop a comment, I would love to know. We're going to be going through some care tips on the ficus shiveriana. Note that the tips that I give you today are things that have worked well in my environment. They will differ to yours and should be served as a guideline only. As usual, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. It would mean so, so much to me. And turn on that bell icon so you get notifications so you don't miss any updates. So there's no denying it. I am absolutely obsessed with ficuses in general. There's something to do with the shape of the leaves, the colors, and the different varieties that you can get out there that I'm personally very drawn to. Today's video is gonna be centered around the ficus shiveriana. It's a variety of the ficus elastica range, which is also known as the rubber plant. It is known as rubber because it produces this milky white latex, which can be used to produce rubber. There are other names for the shiveriana, which include the marble plant and the rubber tree variegata. So the shiveriana can reach a height of 2 meters if you're actually growing it indoors. If you're planting it outside, I do believe that you can grow up to about 20 meters in height. If it is grown outdoors, it is recommended to be potted up because the roots can be expansive and very invasive to the environment. So there are so many varieties of the ficus out there. I actually did a video previously on the ficus taniki if you haven't checked that out already. But I've also found this photo on Facebook that someone contributed of their different ficus varieties and they have so many. They are absolutely beautiful. Look at them. The main types that you will encounter at the nurseries and hardware stores include the Burgundy, the Ruby, the Taniki, and also the Yellow Gem. Yellow Gem is also known as the Satlissima, and I actually used to own one before I gave it up. But as you can see, there are so many different varieties out there. So it's down to personal aesthetic if you're trying to choose one. So I actually stumbled upon this specimen by luck at Bunnings when I was just doing my shopping one day. I was like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I must have this plant. I mean, look at the speckling and the marbling that you see on the leaves. It reminds me of like the really expensive variegated plants that you can purchase these days, but basically in rubber plant form. Now I'm going to go straight into the care tips. The first thing that you should do when you bring it home for the first time is to allow it time to acclimate. Based on personal experience, I actually find the most annoying part about owning a ficus when you bring it home for the first time is the sheer amount of time it takes to acclimate. The multiple ficuses that I have brought home have taken months to get used to their environment. I find that common signs include they start dropping leaves and they just give a little bit of drama in your life and you're kind of like, what is going on? But they do take time, so give it patience and you will be rewarded. After earning a few ficuses, I knew of that acclimatization period, so I just kind of went straight into a repotting exercise when I purchased this one, which is what I'm going to talk about next. Repotting and soil mix tips. Ficuses prefer well-draining soil and I found that all my ficuses have loved and benefited from it. My personal mix is a 30% cacti, 30% orchid, 20% perlite, and 20% charcoal mix. I actually outlined a little bit more detail in my ficus taniki video. You can skip forward to about 6 minutes and 30 seconds. I regret not taking photos of when I actually repot this shiveriana, but I did observe that the roots were quite thin and all I had to do was really shake it out carefully. But essentially, a well aerated soil is your best sale. When it comes to watering, ficuses in general, when you research online, sources say that they prefer to be on the moist side. However, based on my personal experience, I found that my ficuses have benefited from allowing the soil to dry out before the next watering. So my shiveriana is sitting in a quite a well ventilated spot. I usually have the door open every now and then just to allow air circulation to flow through my apartment. So the optimum temperatures for a ficus shiveriana is about 15 to 25 degrees. However, it has been winter here in Australia and we get temperatures of 8 to 10 degrees. They will survive. When it comes to lighting, the vibrancy will become more pronounced of your ficus shiveriana if it is sitting in higher light. Mine is actually sitting in bright direct light in the mornings only for about one to two hours and it is definitely benefit from that. I've noticed that the top growth um, is a little bit more pinkish in colour. So using my ficus shiveriana as an example, you probably get darker greens to sort of that light green if you were sitting it in bright indirect light to medium light. However, I would actually recommend Bright indirect to direct light is the best, but remember always avoid afternoon sun. I might actually experiment with my ficus shiveriana in the next couple of months and keep it in a more moderately 
lit spot as opposed to brightly lit spot and just report back on the results because I am kind of vibing these kind of darker greens as opposed to the pinkish colors these days. I did notice that when I had even prolonged periods of bright direct light, it did go red. So that was an interesting color because these guys are normally speckled green, pink, orange, and yellow. So let's talk about maintenance. As usual with most of your plants, you should be periodically giving it a good wipe down. I sometimes use a solution of neem oil as well as eco oil to wipe those leaves down. And if I'm feeling lazy, and it's actually quite interesting because I don't know if it's actually more of a lazy approach or not, I will bring it to the shower and actually hose it off. Here's some step-by-step -step footage of how I do it. Step one, grab your plant and escort it to the bathroom. I'm gonna speed the footage up here by 400% so you don't have to suffer through my slow walking. Step two, take your plant out of your decorative pot. This is assuming that you're using a grower's pot with drainage holes, which is highly recommended. Place it into your shower or bathtub. Step three, this is optional if you have a plant stand. I like to place mine in the bath or shower to elevate my plant so I can visibly see the water drain through the bottom. Step four, watch me struggle as I use one hand to film this video whilst grabbing my shower head. Make sure you turn the water on to about room temperature. Step five, I change the setting of my shower hose to give the water stream a bit more pressure, but give it a good hose down and hopefully this process will help you remove any gnarly pests on your leaves. Just caveats that I have very well draining soil. If your soil is compact, I do not recommend you do this. Step six, give it time to vibe out on the side and give it a chance to drain the water through the holes. Step seven, give it a gentle shake to remove any excess water. Place your plant back in your decorative pot and bring this outside to dry. My recommendation is that this is only done in the morning and on a warmer day to allow the leaves to dry properly. As a precautionary measure, make sure that there's no direct sunlight hitting the leaves and leave it outside until the leaves are dry. Step eight, finally, when it's time to bring it back in, pull the plant out of the decorative pot and discard any excess water that has accumulated. Now it's time to just put it back in its regular spot. So there's a couple of reasons why I'll bring it to the bathroom to hose it down. The first reason is that I want to flush out the sediments and the excess in the soil and allow that to drain through. And the second reason is that the force of the stream will also blast off any potential pests. So FYI, I actually bought this stand from Kmart for about $6, but be careful of rust because it is a cheap product. If you do embark on this method, make sure that you're doing it in the morning and on a sunny day. The last thing that you want to do is be leaving any excess residual water on top of the leaves because that will cause bacteria and potential diseases. So what I'll do is I'll wipe down that leaf with a paper towel or a microfiber towel if I've still observed any water on the leaves in the evening time. Hopefully I gave you some really useful tips on the ficus shivariana in a nutshell. I hope that was really, really useful for you. And if you haven't subscribed already, it would really, really mean a lot to me if you do. And hit that bell icon so you don't miss any updates. I have a few exciting things coming up in my next section. So stay tuned for that section. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now. Welcome to Plant Rants and Bands, where I showcase some cool, funny, interesting, or helpful content that I find online. I follow a number of different plant related Facebook groups and this one caught my eye. Now this isn't too long, didn't read it, so I'll just scroll to the bottom and read the summary. But freaking fungus! Anthracnose is characterized by necrotic spots on the leaf surface. Under humid conditions, brown masses of spores can form into concentric rings. Necrotic spots eventually become dark brown and the leaves may fall off. I thought this was a particularly useful public service announcement. Preventative measures are always better than reactive. I personally ensure that I'm getting a decent amount of airflow with my plants, but if you are fighting fungus, you can go grab some fungicide and treat it accordingly. I'll catch you in the next one.